Hello and welcome to Nancy Drew, The Secret of the Scarlet Hand. I did take a- oh, did I go in here? I probably didn't. So yeah, I did take a look at the walkthrough for, um, for this temple floor 3. And uh, it just said that eventually you will find these puzzles. So, whoa, that looks, we can get in close, but we can't do anything about it. Let's look around in here. Yeah, all right. So I didn't see the arrow that pointed this way from the stairs so it'll probably be here where we'll find the uh, puzzles or challenges okay okay so um i've got the gods and goddesses whose names we found written down somewhere and uh, most of these do look familiar to me so hold on a sec while I uh, dig up the piece of paper where I've actually got these written down okay found it so, Yum Gox is the corn god. Uh, corn, corn, corn. There. And then Aho Kin is the sun god. Sun. And then, um, Dlalo is the rain god rain and uh, do i have balak written down anywhere um no ixel is the moon goddess Ekaho is the god of travelers. And, and, and Yum Simil. I don't have written down here. Expolank is the jaguar god. Um, right. So there are a few ones here that I apparently haven't written down. Balak, Yumsimil, and Kukul Khan. And then we've got War God, Wind God, and God of Death. Now, What was the name of the god of death? Was it Kukulkan? Um... Kukulkan, god of... Or was it Yumsimil? I'm gonna... Oh, I can't actually unclick that. Okay. Well. Kukulkan Wind God. And uh, Yumsimil or, or Balak. Yumsimil God of Death. And Balak War God? 
Nice. Okay. So, um... I'm... I guess now we just... What are we doing here? <laughs> that was a weird little close-up. Burial rituals. As preparation for the long and often dangerous journey through the afterlife, the Maya buried their dead with religious articles and objects they had used when alive. Tools, such as grinding stones and flint points, jewelry and other ornaments, small figurines placed in the arms of the dead for companionship. Priests were buried with their books. Jade beads were placed in the mouths of corpses, along with ground corn, for physical and spiritual sustenance in the afterlife. Burial rituals for rulers were particularly elaborate to ensure, ensure a high level of status for the ruler in the afterlife. To learn more, be sure to explore the King Pakal tomb exhibit also on this level. Okay. What do we have here? Whoa. Bones. And here we've... Ooh. Creaky bridge. So... Here we've got... The quiz, I think. Yeah. The secret resting place of King Pakal. Uh, once you have completed all of the activities for this level, get your souvenir light stick from the tomb of Pakal. Okay. I wonder if Henrik would remember the answer. Oh. I mean, it was... Um, he did say that nobody knows what animal Lord Bacall actually feared the most. But, um, and there was one animal that, um, that, um, <laughs> what was the name of, of the person who had our job before us? The troublemaker. One that he feared the most. And, uh, I didn't write it down. I could go and uh, ask Hendrik again or or like um um watch the video that I recorded where Hendrik told us about it but um I'm going to resort to the walkthrough for this so uh, just a sec As soon as I looked it up, I remembered it was the Quatimundi. Oh, only one question on this level. Well then. We already found the tomb. But we couldn't open it. So we need to go back here. Cross the creaky bridge. And the tomb was this way. Um, hold on, here it is. Uh, 
Oh, that's the... What? Oh no. Oh no, did I not put the card in when I did the quiz thing? Have I not been using the card? Yeah, see, for some reason, I, I, I got confused here as to, yeah, because this is where I needed to go. Maybe I haven't been using the card. Did I not use the card? Maybe I didn't. I thought I did. Okay. So now it says we have successfully done this. And it gave us our card back. Did I not use the card when I did the, um, the puzzle here? I may not have. Okay, so corn. How kin was the sun? And then, um, Ixal was the moon. Ekahau travelers. Um, Expelank was the uh, jaguar god. And, um, Kukulkan was the wind god. Tlaloc was the rain god. Yumsimil was the god of death. And then Balak was the. Uh, War God. Okay, let's go try that again. <laughs> oh, I went one step too far. Now. What? What? Did I not use the card when I did the whole calendar puzzle thing? I must not have. Okay, so what was it? It was 12. was the whole yin yang situation thingy the yin yang that wasn't yin yang oh 
All right. <laughs> Let's try the tomb thing one more time. Oh, goodness. What else? Piece of jade. And, uh, Bacal's jade mask. Bacal was buried wearing a jade death mask so that the gods of the underworld would recognize him as a king and, uh, accord him the same status and respect as he enjoyed on earth. Each of the jade pieces for this mask was individually carved down to the fine facial features. The pieces were then set into a wooden base. When Pakal's tomb was discovered, hundreds of years later, the wooden base had rolled uh, rotted. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> those are T's. The wooden base had rotted and the jade pieces lay scattered in the sarcophagus. The mask we know today then is a reconstruction. The original mask is on display upstairs in the main exhibition hall. All right. So, now we've got four pieces and we need two. Um, wasn't there supposed to be like a torch or something? Did I already take it? Light stick. Um, I can't go back. I don't think there was anything else for us to take. But it did say that there would be a light stick. Oh, <laughs> cool. Right. Uh, so I kind of happened to see in the walkthrough that um, the way out is through here. So we could probably go through all the different floors and stuff. Why do we get a close-up here? That is so weird. Anyway, um, as I was looking for, you know, answers. It's locked. Uh, as to where exactly the different challenges on this floor are. I saw this. And it said to not go here until you have the glow stick in your hand. Because, um, <laughs> you'll need it. So, we can't actually do anything else here, I think, I guess. But, um... Here we go. We are in the garden. And we came out of that door. Put the glow stick back. And now I sort of did look at how to get the other pieces as well because I didn't have any ideas. And apparently, 
uh, Joanna can help us with one piece. And then something that I I did hear, but I didn't remember that I had heard, was um, that the Sheila whatever person, uh, she can also help us with one piece because they did have a piece stolen from there. So let's call this a Sheila person. You have voicemail. Press zero to retrieve messages. Press I nine guess for we'll listen to our voicemail first. Nancy, it's Joanna. The police are done giving me the third degree, but now the board has suspended me. To, to make a long story short, I'm forbidden to set foot in the museum. Could you please call Franklin Rose and try to reason with him? If we don't get a move on, this exhibit is going straight down the tubes. To replay messages, press zero. Press nine for an outside line. Uh, fine. Let's call Franklin first and then we'll call the Sheila person. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, you must be psychic. I was just getting ready to call you myself. Oh, really? Why? I feel I should apologize for the situation that's going on at the museum, dear. I really did think we were setting you up with a nice little internship, a breather from your casework. But instead, it looks like we've fed you to the lions. <laughs> well, um, don't worry. I'm used to it by now. And after all, this situation is no more treacherous than my recent attempt at a ski vacation in Wisconsin. Anyway, about Beach Hill. I think I know what you're going to say, Nancy. Oh. Let me be frank. Joanna Riggs has been in the doghouse with the board for months. Her thirst for acclaim has led her to gamble the future and the reputation of Beach Hill time and again. Now that we've lost the Pakal carving, one of our most notable pieces, well, she's just got to be stopped. Uh, don't you believe she's genuinely concerned? With Hendrik in the hospital. But with Hendrik in the hospital and Joanna suspended, how can we possibly get this exhibit off the ground? Leave that to me. We'll postpone the opening if we have to. Look, I've got a client waiting, Nancy. What we need now is for you to take up the slack. I've spoken to the rest of the board and we've agreed that the best thing is to put you in charge. I don't think Joanna is responsible. I'm not qualified. But Mr. Rose, I don't think Joanna is responsible for the Bacall theft. She shouldn't be punished. She's not being punished, dear. In legal terms, we're suspending her in abundance of caution, so she won't do any more damage to Beach Hill's reputation or her own. We're counting on you to catch this thief red-handed. Ha <laughs> ha. Just kidding, kiddo. If you can get the Pakal back, we'll see about giving Ms. Riggs another chance. That seems fair, doesn't it? Um, incidentally... I've recovered the Pakal carving. That's great! So the case is closed. I'll reinstate Joanna as museum curator and we can get on with the business of launching this exhibit. Where in the world did you find it? Who's behind all this nonsense? Uh, the case is far from closed. Um... Mr. Rose, this case is far from closed. Do you trust me? What in the world are you talking about? I'm sorry, but I can't explain everything now. I'll take good care of the carving, I promise. What can I say, Nancy? I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. 
Do what you have to do, but let's get this mess cleaned up, all right? So you'll call Joanna and invite her back to work? I'll call her right away. Thanks, Mr. Rose. That's what I'm here for. All right, now, where did I put Sheila's phone number? we're going back to the hotel <laughs> it just would have been so well handy to be able to call her from there let's go back to the hotel then she doesn't answer then we'll just move time on till the morning um um you've reached the chaco canyon cultural center the center is now closed regular hours are from 10 a.m to 6 p.m seven days a week except on major national holidays, when we are closed. Oh, it's... what? It's not 6 p.m. yet. Well, um... I guess let's sleep till morning. Oh, it's 4.30 a.m. <laughs> Oops. Um, I thought it was 4.30 p.m. <laughs> well, that explains why it wasn't open. Um. 10 a.m., huh? Alright. Now then. Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. What can I do for you? I've just got to get my hands on a replica of that jade carving you lost. Do you have any ideas? Not off the top of my head, but maybe one of my staff will have a bright idea. I need some time to ask around. Can you call back later? Sure thing. Feel free to call if you have any more questions. Call back later. Okay. Is it later enough? Or does time actually need to pause? Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. Well, we racked our brains. Finally, one of my staff came up with the original box that the carving was packed in. The piece was encased in a tight foam cast to prevent damage during shipping. I'm not sure how much good it'll do you, but I can send it to you if you like. That just might work. Henrik left Beach Hill as his forwarding address, so I know what to do. I'll send it express. Thanks a million, Sheila. Good luck with your investigation. All right. Cool. Um, so I guess let's go to the museum and talk to Joanna. 
Mm, here we go. Joanna is hopefully back at work. Yep, she's here. Thanks for clearing my name, Nancy. Honestly, I mean, what kind of moron would I be to try and ruin my own exhibit? Anyway, we need to make up for lost time. I need you to go to the storeroom and start unpacking some of those crates. One of the pieces has a fancy security device on it. The code is 0677. 0677, okay. Sure thing, Joanna. I'll see you later. Semper ubi sabubi. 0677. Let's go. There was that one. Oh. There was that one with the, like, the number lock. 0677. Or like the code lock. You probably know what I mean. 0677. Was it here or... I guess we'll take a look. 06. Seven seven. Aha. Uh -huh. Got it. And do we have a package? Yeah, we do. I bet I can make a mold from this foam core. Okay. Um, I think we need to go to the lab for that. Luckily, it's right here. Any machines that we haven't yet used Aha. Uh -huh. And then we need to assemble the uh, cube. According to Henrik's notes, I need to make a key out of these pieces. Right. So there were some notes about um, which piece goes where. But um, hopefully we can also kind of figure it out ourselves, like... I think this piece is going to go here, just based on the shape. Can I not? Can I not put it here? Oh, gotta put the top on first. Can I now? Yes. Okay, so this is really easy now that we've also got the top on because it shows us the exact shape that mm, needs to go there. Now I have the key! Alright. Cool. So now, all that is left for us to do is to go out and uh, figure out the monolith. Uh, 
and uh, just to make sure with the uh, the date thing, I uh, I looked that up in the walkthrough as well, and I had the date wrong. Apparently, oh, apparently there was actually an exhibit somewhere that said ascension or something and it was the sixth so we need to put the, this number thing on six um which is this one there we go and then we just turn this until we hear exactly <laughs> right. So there was a thing that, um, That went, um, that created, there we go, an indentation. So, I'll have to choose which side of the cube goes here. I have no idea. Nothing happened. How do I rotate the cube? Oh. Okay, so that side is done. Where's our next indentation at? So, there we go. I've already solved this part. Okay. So it's this one. We've got the final one on this side, I think. This should be the last step. No. Um. I wonder what's inside. <gasps> oh, whoa. Should I save the... Probably, right? I know there is the second chance thing, but like... These things always have some kind of a timed puzzle thing at the end, don't they? It's blank. Who's your friend, Nancy? <laughs> Taylor Sinclair! Who'd you expect, the Tooth Fairy? Looks like someone forgot her beauty cream. I guess we can't all age gracefully. I'm sure she would say the same about you. You've been a top-notch assistant, Nancy, but I'm afraid you're just not going to make it in the art world. Um... Why are you doing this? Nancy, do you have any idea what that book contains? Um... This tomb and all of its contents belong to Mexico. Finders keepers, I say. Nobody even realizes this thing has any contents. Won't they get a surprise when they finally open it up 
and find that it contains a 7th century scribe and a 21st century detective. Adios, Nancy. Whoa. Well, that was a bit extreme. Luckily, we have a light. Something's missing here. Okay. I'm starting to run out of air in here. Whoa. <coughs> I gotta get out of here. Um, there's a hole. I'm suffocating in here. Let me out. Um... Um... Whoa, our... Is that getting smaller, or am I just panicking? I know we've got the save and everything. I can't breathe! Already did that. This may be the scribe's notes about Bacall. Oh. Is... Aw, <gasps> oh, come on. We almost did it. Two mummies found. Whoa. Well... Where does the second chance take us? Okay. I'm starting to run out of air in here. There it is. I was like, where was it? Now we need to find... <coughs> I gotta get out of here! I'm suffocating in here! Let me out! This may be the scribe's notes about Bacall. Okay, now we just gotta find the door. The, there it is. Oh. Behold! Our heroine emerges from the tomb, like a mermaid from the sea. Meanwhile, the foolish villain stews in the sour soup of his own miscalculation. From deep in the recesses of time, a wise royal scribe whispers her thanks. And a priceless chapter of history is rescued from obscurity. Where to go, Nancy? What in the world? Confound you, Nancy Drew! Dear Dad, it was great to talk to you on the phone last night. I can't wait to see you back in River Heights where I can fill you in on the whole story. Can you believe that your own daughter was recently standing face to face with a real mummy? Now that the scribe's book has been recovered, I understand how important it is and why Taylor thought he could make a fortune selling it on the black market. The book contains one of the only personal accounts of Maya life and existence anywhere. I'm sure it'll be a tremendous addition to our knowledge of the Maya, once it's translated, that is. And now that Henrik's memory is back up to speed again, I'm sure he'll be itching to get to work on it. 
Taylor Sinclair won't be making any art deals for a long time, though, that's for sure. I guess I shouldn't be surprised about Alejandro's discovery that the Pakal carvings provenance documents were faked after all. When Franklin Rose and the board found out, they arranged to return the artifact to Mexico right away. Mexican officials are so happy to have the artifact back, they have pledged a new era of diplomatic relations with Beach Hill. Joanna sure learned her lesson about making deals with shady operators like Taylor. The board has agreed to give her another chance, as long as she reforms her business tactics. And what else? Oh yes, Poppy Dada's announced a new direction in her artwork. All her new paintings are going to feature, what else, mysterious red handprints. So I guess everyone is taking off in new directions now. I'm going to stay and help this exhibit get launched. But I'll see you back at home in a couple of weeks. Have a safe trip home. Love, Nancy. Okay. Dear Nancy, Bess and George told me you're on a case in D.C. I hope everything is working out for you. I wish I could say the same for me. I'm planning on living here, but there's been some trouble. I think someone or something doesn't want me here. Please, Nancy, I'm afraid I can't stay here very much longer. I know you're busy, but I'm desperate. I need you to come out and investigate. Please say you will. Your friend, Sally. Uh-oh, okay. I guess with the howling, that was the kind of segue or introduction to the next game in the series, which we will be starting on uh, Thursday. I'm pretty sure this episode is going to be posted on Tuesday. So yeah, on Thursday, we'll be starting the next game in the series. What was its name? Something about ghost dogs anyway. And I think that letter from Sally that we just saw was kind of the, the segue or introduction into that. So yeah, very much looking forward to getting into another uh, ghostly mystery. Um, this game, I think I was a little less lost in this game than I was in the previous one. In the theater, I had to be constantly looking at the walkthrough and looking at what to do and where to go next. Somehow, I just couldn't get into the same wavelength as the developers or writers or, you know. But with this one, it was like, um, it was way easier to figure out where to go next and what to do next to advance the story. So yeah, I liked not having to look at the walkthrough quite so often. Um, even though I did have to resort to it um, a few times in this game as well. But yeah, all in all, I had a good time and... Uh, and I liked uh, the game. I hope you also enjoyed watching me play and... Um, and I very much hope that you will join me for the next one. I think it was Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, now that I think about it. Well, anyway, we'll be getting into it on Thursday. For now, thank you so much for watching this video and spending a little of your time with me here today. If you like this video, please leave it a like. I would really love that. And also, please do remember to be kind to yourself. Have a lovely rest of your day. And I will see you again next time.